Here's another example. Let's redraw our picture. Always double check to make sure that you read you correctly. Now, is there an initial tail in this picture? Is this a cycle of arrows, or is there an initial tail? Well, I designed this to be a little bit of a trap. I was thinking that some people might have assumed that this is a cycle of arrows, but there is no cycle of arrows here. This is the initial tail. How do we know there's no cycle? It seems like this head is coming back into this tail, but that's not true. Notice that this head is donating electrons only to this carbon, because we know that when the head is pointing directly at a carbon, it's forming a lone pair. So this head is simply transferring a lone pair to this carbon. It's not transferring any electrons to this carbon. So the idea, again, is that this head is transferring electrons into a lone pair on this carbon, but it's not transferring any electrons to this carbon. So this carbon really is at the initial tail. That means it's losing electrons and not gaining any electrons. This carbon is clearly losing electrons from this tail, and it's not gaining any electrons. It's not getting any, this carbon over here with the negative charge is not getting any electrons from this head because this head is pointing directly at this top carbon, which means that we're forming a lone pair here. So this is not a cycle. This is the initial tail. That, uh, it's coming from the negative charge, which means a lone pair. We don't need to erase the lone pair because it wasn't drawn. Since this is an initial tail, we need to change the charge. This atom lost electrons and started off negative, so now it's neutral. We can erase that tail. The head here tells us we're making a pi bond. Now that we're in the middle of the arrows, we don't change any charges. This tail means that we can erase the pi bond, erase the tail. This head means that we can form a pi bond. When you draw that new pi bond, it doesn't matter whether you draw the pi bond inside the ring or outside the ring. There's no significance to that. Draw it wherever you have room on your picture. You can erase this head. This tail is coming from pi bonds. So we erase the pi bond, erase the tail. And now, remember, this really was the final head. We're not in a cycle of arrows. Since this head is pointing directly at an atom, it's forming a lone pair. Now, we don't draw lone pairs generally, but because we are at a final head, we have to change the charge. This atom started neutral, and it gained electrons. So it ends up with a negative charge. Now we can erase that final head. We always check the net charges balance. We have a negative one charge on the left, and a negative one charge on the right. So those charges balance. And you can see that this atom here really did not gain any electrons from this head. Uh, this atom over here did not gain this lone pair. It didn't gain any new pi bond over here. It used to have a lone pair, and now all it has is a pi bond. So it has less hold over those electrons. It used to have two electrons in the lone pair, and now it's sharing them in a pi bond. So it makes sense that this charge went down. All right, so we've learned what to do when you have a cycle of arrows, but make sure that it really is a cycle. If you have a cycle of arrows, you don't need to change any charges. But if it's not a cycle of arrows, then you need to change the charge at the initial tail and the final head. So look at the diagram carefully to see if the arrows are really forming a cycle or not.